Historically, Islam was, in relative terms, quite tolerant of religious minorities. In other words, there was an accepted place. There was a inferior status. There was the occasional persecution, to be sure, but it wasn't systematic. In the aftermath of the imperial era, it became more systematic. In this regard, it was the Jews who suffered first. As the expression goes, first the Saturday people, then the Sunday people. Right at this moment, there's a pastor, a convert from Islam to Christianity in Iran by the name of Yusuf Nadarkhani, who is sentenced to death, could be uh, executed any day. In, um, in Cairo on October 21st, 24th, the government forces killed 24 Christians in cold blood, just killed them. In Uganda, Muslims threw acid on a church leader. In Iraq, a CSI report found in 2007 that close to half of the approximately one million Christians living in Iraq in 2003 have fled the country. The Iraqi Christian Relief Council has said, we are on the verge of extinction. The message is clear. Christianity is unwelcome. One sees the beginning of an eliminationist, a genocidal impulse that was not there historically in Islam. Here is a quote from one of the members of the Nur party, the Salafi party, the people with the long beards in Egypt. He said, as long as cops are alive, there will never be peace. And the implications of that, I think, are very severe. So I think the challenge before us is how does one find a set of policies that allow uh, Western governments to stand up? Make it's not enough for governments simply to make decisions. They have to be, uh, you know, especially when they're human rights decisions, they have to be backed by a substantial portion of the population. So that is, I think, the, 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 the challenge before us.